Hello friends, Miss Janet here from Alexander Hamilton Memorial Free Library. I work in the children's section. And as many of you know, uh, every Monday we try to give you a taste of a particular book that we enjoy reading in the hopes that maybe you would enjoy reading it too. So today I have selected Because of Winn-Dixie. This book is a Newbery winner and it was written by Kate DeCamelo. So, let's begin. Because of Winn-Dixie, Chapter One. My name is India Opal Baloney, and last summer, my daddy, the preacher, sent me to the store for a box of macaroni and cheese, some white rice, and two tomatoes, and I came back with a dog. This is what happened. I walked into the produce section of the Winn-Dixie grocery store to pick out my two tomatoes, and I almost bumped right into the store manager. He was standing there all red-faced, screaming and waving his arms around. Who let that dog in here? He kept screaming. Who let a dirty dog in here? At first, I didn't even see a dog. There were just a lot of vegetables rolling around all over the floor. Tomatoes and onions and green peppers. And there was what seemed like a whole army of Winn-Dixie employees running around, waving their arms just the same way the store manager was waving his. And then the dog came running around a corner. He was a big dog and ugly and he looked like he was having a really good time. His tongue was hanging out and he was wagging his tail. He skidded to a stop and he smiled right at me. I had never before in my life seen a dog smile, but that is what he did. He pulled back his lips and showed me all of his teeth. Then he wagged his tail so hard that he knocked some oranges off of a display and they went rolling everywhere, mixing in with the tomatoes, the onions, and the green peppers. The manager screamed, somebody grab that dog. Well, the dog went running over to the manager, wagging his tail and smiling. He stood up on his hind legs. You could tell that all he wanted to do was get face to face with the manager and thank him for the good time he was having in the produce department. But somehow he ended up knocking the manager over and the manager must have been having a bad day because laying there on the floor right in front of everyone, he started to cry. <gasps> the dog leaned over, really concerned. And he licked his face. Please, said the manager, somebody call the pound. <gasps> Wait a minute, I hollered. That's my dog. Don't call the pound. All the Winn-Dixie employees turned around and looked at me, and I knew I had done something big and maybe stupid too. But I couldn't help it. I couldn't let that dog go to the pound. Here, boy, I said. Come on. The dog stopped, the dog stopped licking the manager's face and put his ears up in the air like dogs do. And he looked at me like he was trying to remember where he knew me from. Hmm. Here, boy, I said, come on. And then I figured that the dog was probably just like everybody else in the world and that he would want to get called by a name. Only I didn't know what his name was. So I just said the first thing that came into my head. I said, hey, come on, Win dixie and that dog came trotting over to me just like he had been doing it his whole life. <laughs> the manager sat up and gave me a hard stare. Hmm. Like maybe I was making fun of him. It's his name, I said. Honest. It's his name. Well, the manager said, don't you know not to bring a dog into the grocery store? Oh, yes, sir, I told him. He got in by mistake. I'm sorry. It won't happen again. Come on, Win Dixie, I said to the dog. I started walking and he followed along behind me as I went out of the produce department, down the cereal aisle, and past all the cashiers and out the door. 
Well, once we were safe outside, I checked him over real careful and didn't look, and he didn't look that good. He was big, but skinny. You could see his ribs, and there were bald patches all over him, places where he didn't have any fur at all. Mostly, he looked like a big old piece of brown carpet that had been left out in the rain. Mm. You're a mess, I told him. I bet you don't belong to anybody. He smiled at me. He did that thing again where he pulled back his lips and he showed me his teeth. He smiled so big that it made him sneeze. It was like he was saying, I know I'm a mess. Isn't it funny? It's hard not to immediately fall in love with a dog who has a good sense of humor. Come on, I told him. Let's see what the preacher has to say about you. And the two of us, me and Win Dixie, we started walking home. That is the end of chapter one for this particular story. And it is called Because of Win Dixie. If you think that you would like to read uh, this book, then please check it out and see what happens to Win Dixie the dog and to this little boy and what his father, the preacher, has to say about him keeping Win Dixie. Thank you for allowing me to share this book with you, and I hope you enjoy it. If you happen to check it out, it is in the children's department in the uh, fiction section. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye bye. <laughs>